So you're thinking of selling your home and you're not, you have so many questions and you're not sure what to do or where to start. I can help you with that. Today, we're talking about 10 of the most common questions that people have when they're gonna sell their home. Here we go. Don't forget to like and subscribe right down below because I make a new video every single week. You're gonna wanna get notified. Also, my contact information is right down there. So if you're coming to Missouri, you're coming to Warrensburg or Knob Noster or Whiteman Air Force Base and you have questions or if you're here already and you're looking to sell your home or you just wanna know, you know, hey, where should I go get ice cream this week in Warrensburg? I can definitely help you with that. Do not hesitate to text, call, email me. My contact info is right down there. I love talking to people. Today, we are talking about 10 of the most common questions that people have when selling their home. So I have been a real estate agent for quite a few many years now, and there are some really common questions that so many different sellers have asked me over the years, and 10 of them have really stuck out. So I figured that I'd just make this video to kind of give an idea to people who are thinking of selling their home, what to expect, and maybe kind of help overcome those, oh my gosh, where do I start? <laughs> okay, here we go. We're gonna start off with number one. So number one, the most, uh, one of the most common questions that I get is, how do I determine the value of my home? So this actually, this is where I would suggest that you find a really good real estate agent because someone who is in this market, who's in this industry, who sells quite a few homes and has quite a few clients buying homes will really understand the market condition. They'll be able to tell you that the value of your home is determined by quite a few things. The current market values, the neighborhood that your home in it is in, the condition, if you need any large updates, like for example, you need a new roof, you need a new water heater, you need a new AC. It's also really, really good to find a real estate agent who will give you something called a free comparative market analysis. So basically they're gonna take a look at your home and if they're really good at their job, they're gonna come to your home, they're gonna walk through it and then they're gonna do some research. They're gonna compare your home, you know, size, how old your house is, square footage, if it comes with any land, they're gonna compare that to recent home sales in the area of homes that are similar to yours. And then they're gonna present you with all this information. All of that together will give you an idea of what your home should sell for. You really want to, when looking at selling your home, you wanna avoid either listing it too high, because then it's just gonna sit on the market, you're not gonna get a lot of showings, but you also wanna avoid listing it too low, because then you can really lose out on a lot of money, to be completely honest. I know that sometimes agents in the past have wanted to list a home low, and while that is a strategy where you can get a lot of competing offers, it can also pigeonhole you into a price range if you don't get a lot of offers, and then you're just stuck in that price range. So there you go, moving on, number two. This number two, this question that I get so very often is, should I make any repairs before selling my home? So actually what's funny is I got this question in an email just last week from a client that I am going to work with. She said, Eva, I'm gonna sell my home in about a year. What repairs should I make? And honestly, the very first thing that I said, and if you are looking at reasons or things to look for when you look for a real estate agent, here's one of them. Don't just take someone's word for it if they haven't seen your property. The very first thing that I said is, hey, there's a bunch of common things like cleaning, decluttering, you know, updating light fixtures and switching out light switch covers. But to give you a really good idea and an accurate idea of what would be worth your time, I need to walk through your property and help you make a list. Because there could be some very important things that I don't even see because I'm not there. There's three rooms that really sell your house, your kitchen, your master bedroom, and your master bathroom. So if you're looking at larger improvements or upgrades, those areas you can sometimes get your money's worth, but for example, if you're looking to do a $30,000 renovation of your child's bedroom, 
you're probably not gonna see that come back to you when you sell your house. So I would say one, have your real estate agent walk through your house with you and tell you what they would recommend you fix, but it's usually going to be little fixes. Paint touch-ups, cleaning, decluttering, make sure your house smells good, curb appeal, plant some flowers outside, clean up the yard. So when a buyer walks into your house or walks on your property, they just see, oh, this is so beautiful, I can picture myself there. So keep it simple, ask your agent. Moving on, number three. Um, this is also one I, uh, I don't get a lot because I am a real estate agent, but I hear it all the time from people online. It's how do I pick a good real estate agent? So if you were my sister and I wasn't a real estate agent, but I knew them, I would tell you, hey, what do we all first do when we're looking for a new business? We go online and we read reviews. So that's the first thing that I would point you to. Go online, look at Google reviews, look at Zillow reviews, see what their past clients say. Then this sounds weird, but go to their social media, see if there would be a good fit for you. I know there's some real estate agents that only work with certain types of houses or certain real estate agents work with multifamily or single family or land. So I would go to their website, go to their Facebook page, go to their Instagram page, go to their YouTube page, take a look at what they put out into the world and see if that's something that you like. I will also say that ask your friends and family because a lot of the times you'll know someone who had a really great experience with a real estate agent that just saved them thousands of dollars and made their lives so much easier. And then you'll also meet people who had terrible experiences. So nothing can really beat the trusted words of a friend or a family member. So there you go. Moving on, we're talking about number four. What are the costs in selling your home? So for the most part, this is pretty straightforward. You'll pick an agent and that agent will charge between five and 6% for their commission. Now, what this means is to sell your home, you're gonna pay an agent between five and 6%. And that isn't something that they completely keep themselves. Half of that goes to them and then half of it goes to the buyer's agent. And what that means is there's two agents involved in selling your home. There's your agent, the listing agent, and then there's a buyer's agent. And the buyer's agent, and their entire job is to bring people to see your house and get them to buy your home if it fits for them. So as your listing agent would have fiduciary responsibility to you and only you, a buyer's agent, their fiduciary responsibility is to their client, the buyer. So two halves make a whole. Really to sell a house, you need a listing agent to list it and then a buyer's agent to bring buyers to the property to buy it. The other fees that you're gonna pay is you'll possibly pay not only your closing costs, but the closing costs of the buyer. It really depends upon what's negotiated in the offer. You can pay for some small fixes. During the inspection period, the buyer may ask for things repaired, which you can either fix them or and pay someone to repair them, or you can offer them more money off the price of the contract. So it, it really kind of fluctuates. But for example, if you're selling your home for $250,000 and you have a $250,000 contract, which would be, would be awesome, basically you're going to give the buyer's agent 2.5% of that, the seller's agent, your listing agent, 2.5% of that. And then you're going to pay for your closing costs at the title company, which just varies. It's usually around 1% of the cost of selling your home. It fluctuates though, depending upon what state you're in, where you are, etc. It also depends upon how expensive your home is and it depends upon what type of loan the buyer is using. So really, if you have a good agent, when at the very beginning when you're selling your home, they're basically gonna give you an idea of how much money it's gonna cost you to sell your home and how much money you're going to make. And they will take all of those things into account and basically say, for example, if you sell your home for $250,000 and you owe $100,000 to the bank, this is how much money you'll have left over after you pay commissions, closing cost fees, any taxes, etc. Moving on, question number five. Um, how long will it take to sell my home? So also super common question. 
Honestly, this varies. The average time a house stays on the market is around 47 days. Here in Warrensburg, in Knob Noster, we have Whiteman Air Force Base, we have UCM, the University of Central Missouri. Houses in our area tend to move a lot faster. The average time is more around 20 days. But it really depends upon what's the price range that your house is in. Anything here in town that's between $150,000 and $285,000 moves pretty fast if it's well priced. Anything above that range, especially in the $400,000, $500,000 and above range, it's gonna last on the market a little longer. If you have a good agent and your house is priced appropriately, it will move at a relatively good speed and you might get lucky and get offers within the first week. It all depends upon if you have a really good person working for you and listing your home. Moving on, question number six, should I stage my home? Now really, I think this has a lot more to do with people who have already moved out of their house or they have a really expensive house. And for them, it may be worth spending the couple thousand dollars to stage the home properly. For example, if you're selling, you know, a $1 million or above house, it may not be a bad idea to stage it. But for the most part, especially in a town where houses move very quickly, where the supply and demand is just very active. There's a lot of buyers in our community and there's a lot of sellers in our community because of the PCSing cycle at Whiteman Air Force Base. Basically every three to six years, families move to new duty stations and with the university so close, every two to six years people graduate. So there's a consistent turnover of homes in our area. So I found with a market here, unless you have a very high price range, it's not necessary for the most part to stage your home. Honestly, the best advice that I could give you as a real estate agent, as a listing agent would be Make sure your house is clean, make sure your house is uncluttered, and walk around your house and look for things that stick out. Are there a lot of paint marks on your wall? Are there a lot of scuffs on your baseboards? Does your house smell like animals? These are things that I like to call death by a thousand paper cuts. If you can take away all the little paper cuts in your house, you have a much better chance of selling it fast and selling it for a high price. Moving on, number seven, what is the process of negotiating offers? So that's a really great question actually that I hear all the time. So you're gonna put your house on the market, you find a real estate agent, they list the house, they sign a listing, you sign a listing agreement with them. They're gonna, you know, get photographs, they're going to list the property and put, come put a sign in the front yard, put a lockbox on your door, and you're gonna start having showings. So a buyer's agent is gonna start bringing people to look at your house. One of them gives you an offer. So the first thing your listing agent is gonna do, he, they're gonna email you or call you and say, hey, we have an offer. They're gonna send you the offer, go over it, and give you advice on whether they think that you should accept it or if you should go back and negotiate. I 90% of the time will always negotiate because usually the first offer can be kind of a low ball and I want to get my client what I think that they deserve out of their house and it is my job as a listing agent to have fiduciary responsibility to my client. So I'm going to try to get as much money for my client as possible. So we send back a counter offer. The buyer then has a set amount of time to respond. Now a really good thing to keep in mind, and I tell my clients this, that at any point, either of us can back off when the ball is in our court. So for example, if we receive a counter offer, we don't particularly like it, but then all of a sudden we get another offer on our house that we like better. Since the ball is in our court and we receive the counter, we can say, no thanks, not gonna counter back with you and move on to the next offer. You can't negotiate with two people at once. You have to pick who you want to negotiate with. Now this is different from, say example, you put your house on the market and it's just like amazing, so many people come and you get six offers. You can call for a best and highest, which means that you can ask everyone to put in their best and highest offer that you then get to choose who you want to negotiate with. And that is a dream scenario. So. If you have a good listing agent, they will be able to point you in the right direction and advise you on the best way to go about negotiating the sale of your property. Okay, we're getting there guys. Moving on, number eight. What happens at closing? 
Okay, so you've gotten an offer, you've gone through inspections, you've gone through the appraisal process, and now you're ready to close your house. What your agent's gonna do is they're going to schedule a time for you to go to a local title company that you've been working with the whole time. You're gonna show up, you're going to sign some papers. Honestly, it's a lot smoother and easier and faster process for the seller than it is the buyer because they have to go through all the loan documents. You just have to basically sell your house. You have to go in, sign the papers, bring any keys, uh, make sure everything is moved out. Usually you'll have a final walkthrough by the list, by the buyer's agent and by the buyer to make sure that everything is still in the same condition, that the house looks good. You'll then, in my personal opinion, I always say that my sellers should maybe have their house professionally cleaned, spend $100, have someone come in and clean it because it's a really nice gesture for the buyer to come into a clean house. There's nothing worse than moving into a house and it's filthy. <laughs> so unless you're getting it like in a fire sale and then that's a different story. But so really closing is you go to the title company, you sign the paperwork, you make sure everything's out of the house, you bring any garage door openers or keys that you have and you give them to either the title company or you leave them in the house or you give them to your agent to give them to the buyer's agent and then you receive a check after the buyers sign all their documents and pay money. Usually the money comes from a lender or they're paying cash. There's a lots of different ways to buy a house. But then you receive a big old check or you get a wire transfer and then you're on to your next adventure. Moving on, we're getting there guys. Number nine, how do I sell my house quickly? Always a great question. I will say the number one thing that you can do to sell your house quickly is have a good real estate agent because they're gonna do two things. One, they're gonna walk through your property and advise you on exactly what things you need to fix or change to have your house sell quickly. And number two is they're gonna price it correctly. They're gonna do a comparative market analysis and they're gonna know exactly at what price you can put your house on the market for and sell it like that. Another great thing is they'll know when, because when is a big thing. People buy houses for the most part in the spring and summertime because who wants to move in the winter? It's freezing and it's snowing and there's ice and I am clumsy and I fall down a lot. So if everyone else is like me, moving in the winter time is literally a nightmare scenario. So knowing that you wanna sell your house Keep, that, keep the season in mind because that will also sell your house quickly. But having a really good agent, they'll point you in that direction. Last but not least, we're down to number 10. What legal documents do I need to sell my home? Now, this is just, you'd think this question was out of the blue and crazy, but you'd be surprised how many times I've gotten it. Really, the thing that is most important that you, you need is some form of identification. You need Honestly, if you have a good agent and they have a good title company, they're gonna handle the rest. You don't have to worry about anything else because they're gonna track down your deed, they're gonna track down your title, they're gonna track down your property lines, your lot lines, they're gonna go track down your property taxes. Everything having to do with your home, they're going to get. That's why you pay closing costs on your house is that you're paying the title company to do all of that documentation for you and your real estate agent is really in communication with the title company making all of that happen. So really the only thing that you need legal wise is you need to show up to closing with an ID and it's just that simple and then you can sell your property. So I hope that by going through all 10 of these questions that kind of lays some fears or question marks or unknowns about how do I sell my house? Because I know the process can be a little daunting. I feel like I sound like a broken record when I'm like, hey, get a good real estate agent because all of these things, that's what they are paid to do. They're paid to think about all of the things that maybe you don't know about or are overwhelming and make the process as easy and smooth as possible so that you get the most money out of selling your home. And that's, that's what we're paid to do. <laughs> I hope you've liked this video. I hope that if you have any questions, you'll pop them down there in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I make a new video boop, 
every single week you're gonna wanna get notified. Also, my contact information is right down there. And if you have any questions, if you're moving here, do not hesitate, give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. I love talking to people. Till next time, bye.